what we're gonna do here is create a motion design product from start to finish in DaVinci Resolve with a focus on the Fusion tab. There is a lot of stuff going on here, so I'm gonna break this down into parts. This first part being an overview of the process. And before starting any project, it's always a good idea to do some research. So the first thing that I did was look at NBA style motion graphics, and then I went specific to the Miami Heat found some images that really stood out to me. Now, my goal was not to copy anything. I just want to get ideas for style and inspiration overall. And while I really wasn't looking to use these type of Miami Vice colors and styles or whatever you call it, I did get an idea from looking at the warped grid here and that gave me inspiration for the background of the actual motion design work that was created. This one here, I just like the mix of elements all right, so let's jump into it, going into the Fusion tab. So as you can see, things get a little bit complicated. And to keep your sanity, you probably want to make your layout horizontal as I did because your Fusion area right here is laid out horizontally. So working this way, it'll let me fit as many nodes on the screen as possible. And I won't be scrolling around and trying to find stuff, which slows you down. Another thing that's really important is creating these underlays because I have a lot of different sections. And if these were just unorganized nodes, it would be very difficult for me to come back in later and figure out where stuff is. And having the underlays labeled in a way that makes sense really helps. Also, you'll see some things here like this is the grayscale photo. This is the photo on the left. This is the photo on the right. They're all the same color, so that helps me see things that are similar, like these particle effects. I've made them also the same color, so at a glance, I can quickly go and find things. Another thing that helps is to label your nodes here. So I don't label all of the nodes, but I label the nodes that I think are important that need to stand out. And the way I do it is I want to know that this is always a text node. So I leave the original first part of the naming. This is text this is text one then after that i add first to this one and last to this one if i just name this node first and i just name this node last i might not remember that it's actually a text node now let's break this thing down to see how it works so in this section here i've created this pattern and it's created with these holes these are ellipses and you could see that they're placed in a certain way that they create a pattern we'll get into all the details of how to create this from scratch in an upcoming video but i just want to show you that everything is procedural if i wanted to i can make edits here and get a different type of pattern so that is definitely a lot of fun to mess around with. In this orange section here, I've taken that pattern and made kind of a 3D fabric. So if we select this and preview it, you can see we have that. And one of my favorite parts about this is getting this little bit of 3D depth. And as you can see, I've used some displace nodes on a 3D image plane to get this waving effect. Not really that complicated but adding this drop shadow makes it look just a bit like extruded. Otherwise it would just be this flat looking image. The next thing we've got is this background logo here. Nothing too special. This logo shows up behind. So we get an effect like that. For the image in the middle, I use some color correction nodes to get it to match the rest of the work. And also a mask was used to make it animate on in an interesting way. And moving on here to the photo on the left. Actually, let's preview it this way so we can see more clearly. This one was kind of fun. Nothing too complicated, but I added a gradient over here and a bit of a glow to give this really bright, hot look. And then just added this particle over top here for a bit of extra detail in there. A little bit of an issue was finding out how to get the particle effect to follow the motion of the image. I found a workaround that seems okay, but there's probably a better way to do it. And there are some tricks with the directional force, the turbulence and the flock and adjusting the settings in them to get the particles to move in a more natural and interesting way. This is an underlay for the number just to get things to stand out a little bit better. And the actual number here, I just use a mask here and you can see that right there. And then we got the 
photo on the right here, essentially the same as the photo on the left with some very slight changes to the settings. Basically copy and paste, particle on the left, particle on the right, they're almost the same thing with also some minor changes. And we got this particle look. And the last thing is the name, first name, and the last name. So before I even did one keyframe of animation, I set up my design like this so that I get all the layout looking how I want it. And then I animated things after the fact. So for the animation, we've got the Jersey texture kind of being waved by displacement, 3D displacement. There's actually two displacements, one with a big kind of simple wavy effect and then another one for a smaller detail. And mixing those two up together makes the wave look more realistic. And then as the images start to come on, there's a light that lights the background up and then we could see it a little bit more clearly. It's a red light on that background and then the images come in and they come in with the gradients animated so they're a little bit darker and then as they come in they get brighter we've also got the middle image the black and white image scaling up with this kind of venetian blinds mask animating in and that is also mirrored here with the text it has that and the lines are at the same angle getting stuff to line up and then we got text with some different styles on it and those just kind of pop in background elements behind the text and that just gives a little bit of extra movement and then we've got the particles they're masked off so the particles are just emitting from the edges yeah so that's it for the animation in the next video we'll talk about how to set up this background here which is really fun